Hello, everybody. My name is Griffith Kauser. I'm a policy officer with the European Polar Board. And I will be talking today about our move towards an integrated database for polar logistics and infrastructure. I would like to thank the Year of Polar Prediction Final Summit organizers for having me, as well as Rana Kabate, who will be asking, sorry, answering questions after this presentation is finished. I'd also like to give credit to Joseph Nolan, who began this project. So when we talk about an integrated database for polar logistics and infrastructure, we need to ask, why do we need this? Why is this important? Why do we spend our time building this? And as anyone who has done field work in the polar regions can tell you, the polar regions are very big. They are very remote. They are expensive to operate in. And logistics and infrastructure data is not always particularly easy to find or access. Um, sharing that data creates a lot of opportunities. It uh, makes project collaboration more efficient. And so the European Polar Board and our partners are developing a tool, which we've named PolarDex, to try and remedy some of the inefficiencies out there. The first iteration of this was the European Polar Infrastructure Catalog. That was a static document that we put together, developed jointly by the European Polar Board and EU PolarNet 1. It had data provided by Eurofleets, Interact, and Comnap, and it covered stations, camps, laboratories, shelters, vessels, and aircraft. So that then morphed into the European Polar Infrastructure Database, which is an online database. It is searchable, and it has much of the same data. It's just a bit more user-friendly. It's still on the website if you would like to go and check it out. But later on, we began to work with ESAFIC. And ESAFIC lent a huge amount of data to PolarDex, or what would become PolarDex mainly centered around Greenland, but we also began to get more partners lending us data. And in early 2022, we integrated ESAFIX data to significantly expand our data set. And then we also had SUS, the Southern Ocean Observing System, and they had their Due South database, which is upcoming expeditions in the Southern Ocean. Uh, this we began to integrate as well. And once we had integrated all this data, we launched PolarDex. So this is the European Polar Infrastructure Database, as well as SUS Do South, and ESAFIX data, as well as other partner data on a new map-based platform. It combines the features of all of the above mentioned data sets, and it is searchable. You can search for vessels, aircraft, planned routes, field facilities. You can search for specific information, or you can search via filters. And this was launched on the 21st of April, 2022. So it also has Antarctica, if you are interested in looking at the facilities in Antarctica. This is actually where uh, the Due South platform that we had integrated is mostly concentrated. That's where the planned routes are. We're hoping to expand that into the Arctic shortly. But if you were to click on one of those station points that you saw on the previous slide, you would get something like this. This is a Canadian research station, a weather station. And it just gives you sort of the basic information. It gives you the location data, the sort of environmental data, some of the weather conditions and uh, more than that, if you would like to go and look at it. And if you were to search for vessels, you might come up with something like this, the Arne Friedrichson. And this is a fishing monitoring vessel which operates in the Arctic Ocean frequently. So there is basic information about the vessel as well as some of the scientific instrumentation available on board for the research vessels. We also have aircraft and their research capabilities. So 
We also have this available in list view, which can make it more easily searchable. And if you look on the right hand side, that is a bit zoomed in, but it is one of our data overlays that is the average daily sea ice temperature uh, data overlay over the northern uh, part of Greenland and the Canadian Arctic archipelago. If you look at the bottom of that image, you can see a few smaller icons next to the big pins. That's another data overlay that shows medical facilities, accommodation facilities, and things like that. Again, data provided by ESAFIC. So I would encourage everyone to go and check out PolarDex. It's available on the website, polardex.org. Uh, we would love to get your feedback. We'd love any comments that you have on the functionality. If you know of an organization or you're part of an organization that has a data set we could try and integrate, we would be very happy to work with you on that. And I should mention that PolarDex is not the holder of the information within it. Most of the information is provided by partner organizations. PolarDex is just a platform which shows the data in a visual format. So it's not intended to be the ultimate platform to rule them all, but it does bring together a variety of data from different sources into one place. So Polardex has faced a few challenges, one of which is the lack of standards in a lot of uh, infrastructure and logistics data out there. So we are working with some partner organizations to try and develop these data standards so that it's easier to put this into one larger database. And lastly, I would say that one of the most important parts of this is community buy-in. So if we don't have researchers and organizations using this, then it's much less useful to continue updating it and maintaining it. So community buy-in is particularly important. So again, I would, I would encourage you to go and look at it. And if it's useful, then that's very good. And if you think that you have any ideas of how it could become more useful, then we would love to hear from you. I'd like to also thank our partners who have been working on this with us. We have SUS, we have EU, EU PolarNet, SIOS, who gave us a lot of Norwegian data, Interact, Comnap, Eurofleets, British Antarctic Survey, Alfred Wegener Institute, uh, Eurofar, ARIS, ESAFIC, of course, IATO, and uh, last but not least, Blue Lobster. They are the technical masterminds behind this who are so good at making our ideas actually turn into a reality. So thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity to, to speak to you, and I look forward to any questions you might have. Thank you. And I understand we've got Renuka online who can ask, and you can ask questions for Renuka if there are any. Are there any questions in the audience? If not, I've got one. We are actually going well for time. Um, Renuka, so where do you see Polarex heading? I mean, what's on your wish list in terms of developing it further in the future? Uh, thanks, Daniela. Polardex, I think Polardex tries to bring together uh, a lot of the data that exists in on single platforms in many different places. And I think, as Griffith mentioned, one of the major challenges that we need to we need to really try and solve um, is to try and have. Uh, the metadata standards for all of these different infrastructures, um, have them standardized globally. And I hope that Polidex can help the community uh, in providing those kinds of uh, metadata standards. So I think that's the first step in the near, near future that we are hoping to assist the community perform. Um, so please, please uh, have a look at Polidex and feel free to get in touch with us uh, at the EPB if you, if you have any suggestions for us, if you have any comments um, or any other data sets that 
uh, would like to partner with us, we'd be happy to talk to you. Thanks.